right, welcome everybody. It's Peter and Tabby. We're here at EMS World Expo 2021 at the Flight Bridge Ed booth. We're going to talk today about ephemeral I.O. If any of you are using the proximal tibia in cardiac arrest in kids and maybe even in adults, uh, we want to take you a little higher, so let's go for it. Disclosures. I'm the founder of Hand Tabby. We won't talk about that today. So the question is, what is the track record of the proximal tibial I.O. in pediatrics? Does it really work? I think some of you have an answer to that in your own mind. And is there an alternative site that we can improve clinical use? Let's take a look. Many of us in the adult world, we use the proximal humerus for the, for the I.O. in the adult world. And you can see it's a great location. It's, it's got a, a straight shot to the heart, nice wide open, very easy to use. But what about kids? The proximal uh, humerus in kids, you can see here that when you're a child, uh, you can see that the child does not have solid bone until about 9 or 10 years of age. So that means that if you're putting a needle into the child's proximal humerus, you're putting it into the cartilage. And therefore, we wouldn't recommend a proximal humerus in a child under the age of 10 years of age. So let's talk about the proximal tibia landmarks. We all know where to go with the proximal tibia. And, you know, it's not, an, it's not a very hard thing to do. However, many people miss. And why do they miss? Because if you look at this bone, it's so thin, and the needle you're putting is long, and therefore a lot of people miss this bone. So what do we do? And let's maybe go up a little higher. And so remember, you're on the medial aspect. So if this is a kid's leg, you're on the medial aspect of the leg on the tibia. We're gonna do the same exact thing, but a little higher up on the humerus. This paper is what changed my mind. So there was a cadaver study that they did where they actually took children in cardiac arrest who had died. They left the IO in and they put them through the CAT scanner. Let's show you the photos of what happened, where these needles were. You can see here for the children under the age of one, 47% of the IO of the proximal tibia were malpositioned. In children over one year of age, 39% of the tibial IOs were malpositioned. That's a big number, right? These are the images. So these are all real kids who unfortunately died. They all had IOs placed in their proximal tibia. And this is right from the paper. I mean, you can see that the needle goes through the bone. Another one goes through the bone. This one is not even in the bone. And so it turns out that the proximal tibia is probably the worst place to put an IO needle until we found another place to go. So just to recap, 47% of infants and 39% of children over one year had a proximal tibial IO malposition, wrong place. Okay. So what do we do? What about the distal femur? Well, the distal femur is a, you can't miss it. If you miss it, I'll take you out to dinner. You can't miss it. Well, some people have missed because they, they don't know where the femur is. That's a different story. So how do you find it? You look at the outstretched leg, you feel for the patella, you go above the patella, about a centimeter, and then a centimeter over. That's very simple to do. So here's how it is. There's your patella. You go a centimeter above the patella, and then a centimeter medial. Some people like to go right in the midline. I'm not a midline kind of guy. I'll go medial. And there's no way you're going to miss the bone. There's no way that you're, you're going to hit the growth plate. This is a can't miss place. So what are the landmarks? You can see here that there is no growth plate where you're going. Let me repeat, there is no growth plate. You can't miss it, you can't hurt the kid. It's a no-brainer. And again, the growth plate I'm pointing out here, that's where your child's bones grow from. When you go above the patella, you're not hitting the growth plate at all. And when the needle goes into that bone, it ain't coming out. Okay, that's beautiful bones. In my systems, we moved to this a couple years ago. However, we found that we were putting the distal femur IO in the awake patient, septic child, kidney IV fluids. We don't do that anymore because it hurts. It hurts really badly. 
So we only now do it in pediatric cardiac arrest. We use the distal femur in cardiac arrest. We still use the proximal tibia for the child who is not dead. Don't use the pink needle ever. You'll never have to use the pink needle ever again. Okay, so this one we won't use anymore. Most kids will get the blue 25 millimeter needle. Um, there are a lot of people now using this only in adults. So the San Antonio Fire Department, Dave Miramontes, they only use distal femur for everybody. Adults, kids, it doesn't matter. Lee County, Florida, they only use the distal femur. They moved away from the proximal humerus. This, my friends, is the future. So again, I'm not an easy IO rep, but I will tell you that before you drill that bone, you drop the needle, you touch the bone, you have to have a hashtag visible. So these are good. This is no good. In San Antonio, they will even do a cut down. They'll cut through the skin and they'll put the bone through that open skin just to get to the femur. They are desperately only using the femur in San Antonio. I love it. So, the track record of the proximal tibia, horrible. Get rid of it. We do have alternative sites. Use the distal femur. It's the best place to go. I'm Peter Antavian and I approve this message. Thank you, Flight Bridge. That's a wrap.